Hi, my name is Laura Laws and welcome to Henry Ford Museum in Greenfield Village. We're going to show you a short overview of some of the things that we have here. We have a lot of cars and a lot more. Uh, what I want to start my tour off with is we're going to talk about this car a little bit right here. This car is the ch car that changed the world. This is the Model T. This is the 15th million Model T. Uh, Henry Ford, there's only been one other car that's ever outproduced a Model T and that's the VW Bug. When the Model T was produced and they started buying them and moving out, the countryside changed entirely. That's where we come in here. Now, when the, you know, most places were rural areas, most of the places started, these, these diners started popping up at the side of roads all over the place. Um, most of the diners that were on the highway have died away because more people are more interested in going to places like Howard Johnson's where they knew what they were getting or White Castle and then finally of course the King McDonald's. Uh, this McDonald's sign is a 1960 sign from Madison Heights, Michigan. You can see that it has one single arch as opposed to the two arches that we have now. So we go from this poor little car that can go maybe maybe if you really push her 50 miles an hour to a GTO which you know goes like crazy. Did you all see the presidential limousines? We haven't had a chance to look at those yet. Well this one's the Reagan limousine right here but this is the limousine that President Reagan was in when when they pushed him in after his assassination oh, attempt. Yeah. They pushed him in there and that's what one, yes and the one behind it is our Kennedy limousine oh, okay. and that's the one that President Kennedy was assassinated in. This is our spine area in the museum. Uh, we start off here with our bikes, and back behind the bike is the uh, Roper steam engine. You can see one of the early Benz cars right there. Mr. Benz actually credited with the uh, invention of the internal combustion engine. Right here is our Durier, which is the first mass-produced car in the United States. Thirteen of these cars were produced. There's only one left, and we have it right here. That's a 1904 Ford engine for a Ford motor car. This is a Benz, 1903 Benz. Behind it is a Model N. This red car right here is a Ford Model A, 1903. First production car for Ford Motor Company. Right here, what we're looking at is a cutaway chassis of a Model T Ford. This is a, a 1912 Cadillac. This is an Overland 1918 Overland Touring Car. And as you see, our cars are getting a little older here, here, coming up. We have a Chevrolet. This is a Dodge Brother sedan, 1924. Right here we have our 1942 Jeep, used in World War II. Right here, this beauty right here, is our Tucker. There were 50 of these cars made. 1948 Tucker Torpedo Sedan. This is our 1949 Ford Sedan. Right here, coming up, is a VW Bug, a Beetle, 1949. And right here, this turquoise car is a Corvair, 1960. 
And then finally here we have the very first Honda produced in the United States. Production number one. Drive-in theaters actually started out as a walk-in theater. When uh, they started, movies started early, the, somebody got the bright idea, let's do it outside, you know, at night, and we'll put, we'll put the screen there, we'll put a fence around it, we'll charge people, you know, two pennies to come in and watch the movie. Well, in, back in the 30s, this one fellow decided, well, you know, this is a really good idea, but I'm going to do cars. And so that's how the drive-in theater was born. And most of the gas stations back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s uh, had tons of people out there. Texaco would have four or five guys come out, check your oil, check your hoses, check your air. We have right here our Holiday Inn sign. And of course, it changed the way that we, we lodge. Now, before then, if you look down that road a little bit, you've got a, a tourist cabin. But these tourist cabins, you never knew what they were going to be like. Um, and so one gentleman decided that he was going to build a, a place where people could bring their families. And that's how the Holiday Inn st uh, started uh, back in Memphis, Tennessee. Burma Shave Signs, that was probably one of the first so road sign advertisement were the Burma Shave Signs. Of course, they all rhymed. And of course, they, they died out in about in the 60s, in the early 60s. It says, within this veil of toil and sin, your head grows bald, but not your chin. Yep, an Airstream. Some people like to bring their house with them. Next to it is our Bugatti Royale. There were, Mr. Bugatti had actually planned on making 25 of these cars. He ended up only making six. Five are still in existence. It's probably, the it values, it, it fluctuates, but say between eight and twelve million dollars. Here's our horse-drawn vehicles and our street cars. Over here we have a 999. This is a, one of the uh, race cars that Henry Ford built. He actually built two of these. He had 999 and its sister car, the Arrow. And these cars had the largest engines of any cars built at that point, 1902-1903. Mr. Ford wanted to prove to people what cars could do. And of course, he started Ford Motor Company in 1903, so he was really using these for promotion. And this car actually broke the land speed record. 91.4 miles per hour in 39.4 seconds. Uh, this car was also driven by uh, Barney Oldfield, who was a very famous uh, pro cyclist. He used to cycle bicycle race. And Mr. Ford called him up and said, hey, do you think you could drive my car? Mr. Oldfield said, well, I've never driven a car, but I'll give it a go. So he never had driven a car. He came here. He tried it out. He loved car racing. And then he became, of course, known for, for racing cars. Next to it is our Packard. That's the first pa uh, one of the first cars that went across country, 1903 Packard. Old Pacific. But over here is the car that started it all. This is um, Henry Ford's uh, quadricycle. He developed this in 1896. He built this in a shed in his backyard uh, at 58 Bagley Avenue in here in Detroit. And he ended up, he was so kind of narrow-minded about it, he didn't realize when he got ready to take it out for a test drive, it was too wide to fit through the door. <laughs> so he had to take a hatchet and bust down the door to get it out, and he finally did. This is his very first engine. He had, thought, he had seen a, a drawing or an idea of it. He made this one, and of course, this is 1893. He brings it in to his wife, Clara, to help her. She's supposed to prime it, and, he's, uh, and this is Christmas Eve. She's trying to make Christmas dinner, and he's, uh, he's uh, trying to get it to run. He ran it one time. He saw that it ran, and he started making the quadricycle right away. You can see some of the design models that they came up with here. The three-wheel car, 
some of these some of these didn't make it the, the 48 Hudson I think did and Hudson interestingly enough was uh, JL Hudson here in, in Detroit uh -huh. He was the one who, who started that car company. These cars are all concept cars. They never made it to production. Well, this one did, but uh, not the way it looked. You'll never guess what it is. I cheated, I looked. It's a Mustang, that's right, 1962. Once they brought it out, um, the powers that be looked at it and said, probably Lee Iacocca, I'm not sure who, but looked at it and said, well, I want a back seat in it. And so they went back to the drawing board and they came up with, uh, this, uh, the, the one that we see. And if you want to see the very first production Mustang, what you need to do is go behind the drive-in theater. It's a cream colored one. This is our uh, Allegheny locomotive. This is the largest locomotive that was ever built. Uh, this locomotive uh, actually has a reinforced floor underneath it because it weighs about 600 tons. Uh, next to it is our Clinton DeWitt. Our Clinton DeWitt is a replica of one of the first uh, steam trains. This car right here, this rail car right here, is the Fairlane. Uh, this is Mr. Ford's personal rail car. This is a snow plow and this snow plow was actually attached to the engine. It does not have a motor itself. So it's attached to the engine and it plows all the snow off of the rails so that the trains can come through. And you notice it's uh, Canadian Pacific so they get a lot of snow in Canada. Sleds and more horse-drawn uh, carriages. We're coming on the uh, Owl Night Lunch Wagon. This wagon was actually used by Mr. Ford when he worked at Detroit Illuminating Company down in uh, downtown Detroit. And he bought this and we restored it to its former luster. This is probably the only, I'm not sure, but it's probably one of the few uh, wooden horse-drawn wagon, lunch wagons left. And of course a, a horse-drawn hearse. And a horse-drawn mail wagon. And this motorcycle that you're coming upon is, it was owned and driven during the 1920s by Charles Lindbergh. And you'll notice this red car here, that's one of the first Model T's, a 1908 Model T. Next to it is our 1924 Doble, which is a steam car. And next to it is a Flyer, Thomas Flyer. And then of course, our 1910 Stanley Steamer. Over here we have our collection of fire trucks. This is our 1925 uh, Pierce Arrow aluminum car. It's made out of aluminum. And this is our Liberty Mutual survival car number one, built in 1957. Many of the safety features that were put in this car you see on your cars nowadays. Like lap belts, shoulder belts, that type of thing. Here's another one of our treasures that a, a lot of people just walk right by and they don't even notice is our Rockwell, Norman Rockwell painting. And this was actually the cover of the 1924 Saturday Evening Post in July. Let's see, July 19th, 1924. Over here we have some of our oddities. We have the first skidoo there, first snowmobile. You might have noticed over here, here's our, our, our hot rods. We have a dune buggy, our Corvette. Our, high, our Ford Hot Rod, and of course an MG. 
Mr. Ford bought the, this trailer for the museum to show modern transportation. And then one day he was talking to his good friend Charles Lindbergh, and Charles Lindbergh was complaining to Mr. Ford that the kids are getting on him, him and his wife's nerves, and they were both writers, his wife and Murrow. They both liked to write. They had nowhere to go to be quiet and write. So Mr. Ford gave them this trailer. Well, these are steam engines. Mr. Ford likes steam engines. A lot of these steam engines were actually brought here and the museum was built around them. Uh, a lot of these steam engines, the technology for the steam engines changed, but the, uh, they kept the old technology running because the machine still ran really well and it was very efficient. So they never did change the technology. This may look like a flying saucer, but it's actually a house. This was a 1946 house uh, designed by R. Buckminster Fuller, and he actually designed it in 1929, but they didn't build it until 1946. R. Buckminster Fuller is also known for the geodesic dome. Right here is our very first Fordson tractor. This uh, was produced in 1917. This is production number one. It was given to Henry Ford's good friend, Luther Burbank. Right here is our agriculture section, and as you see, we have one of the finest agriculture sections of any museum in the United States. We start off with the very uh, crudest of implements, and we end up with our big, huge combines. These are some of our steam traction engines, and how they worked is this flywheel right here would have a, a big belt around it. It would be attached to a threshing machine or whatever type of farm machinery machine to do whatever you needed to do, and it would actually power it. So, and they were portable so they could go from farm to farm. Mr. Ford liked these. He actually, this actually changed his life. He saw one of these chugging down the road by his farm and he decided when he saw it that he didn't want to be a farmer anymore. He wanted to be an engineer. So it changed his life. So he collected a lot of these. This is a, the largest indoor-outdoor complex in the United States. And what's really cool about ours, our museum, is that you can actually um, come here to the museum and see everything, and then you go down to the village and you can actually see them using the stuff and applying the stuff. Here's our section on home arts, all the cleaning and scrubbing, sewing and ironing. <laughs> Washing and drying and vacuuming. Before Detroit was known as Motor City, we were known as the stove capital of the world. Garland stoves were built here in, in Detroit. As you can see here, most of the time I tell people they need two days to come here. One day for just the museum, and the next day for Greenfield Village. Okay, that's about all we have for you today. We're so glad that you came out to see us. Please come and visit us in person. We have a lot more to see.